As is often the case, I went into the history yeah. of my organization, which is celebrating its 131st season. Wow. And I looked at the history of string quartets in Ann Arbor, and I realized something pretty profound, that you, the Takash Quartet, have really crossed over in terms of your place and the importance of that place within the history of my organization. I would say that certain quartets because of the longevity of their relationship with us and with our audience, start to define the era of um, string quartet playing and chamber music in general. Uh, certainly in the 30s and 40s, it was the Budapest Quartet wow. who played here um, 16 times over the wow. course of a couple of decades. And then um, the mantle was sort of picked up by the Guarneri's who really defined our chamber music series mm -hmm. in the 70s and 80s. And really that mantle has now been picked up by the Takash Quartet, which um, last night made its 12th appearance here in Ann Arbor. Wow. And um, after next season, we'll have performed here 15 times. We don't want to announce what's happening next year yet. Um, I was just wondering what your thoughts are about playing concerts here and um, if you, have any expectations as a performer when you come to Ann Arbor, what it will be like to um, play in front of the audience? Yeah, it's, it's funny because I was thinking that yesterday when we, when we arrived that Ann Arbor has become, I mean, I've always enjoyed playing here, but it's become a really high adrenaline concert for mm -hmm. me. It's, it's very nice to play for an audience that knows you mm -hmm. and they're up for an adventure. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, we get more and more sensitive to different types of audience. Some audiences listen in a more passive way, I think. Mm -hmm. This group, well, I don't feel that with at all, and maybe it's partly because we've built the relationship over the years. And so for me, actually, the, I, it's, it's one, of those, one of the places where I have to concentrate on managing the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some places you go where you, you look for your adrenaline, but that's not an issue here. I remember last year, and I'm, I can't believe I'm going to say this to your face, but I was walking up, because you never want to be, in my business, you never want to become predictable. Right. Predictability actually, is just the death now. That, that's true for us as performers. It, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So um, I'm walking up the stairs to the Rackham Auditorium last year, mm. and I was thinking, hmm, 10, 11 years in a row, I'm wondering if this is um, becoming too predictable mm -hmm. or too expected on the part of our audiences. And that's literally what I went into the Rackham Auditorium thinking. And I remember sitting there in my seat and you, pull, you just pulled the first chord. I don't even remember the quartet. Mm -hmm. But you just pulled the first chord and I thought, oh no. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's really, um, it's such a pleasure when you're here. Well, we, we, we love being here. And I think for us on, when we're rehearsing, I mean, that's obviously a fine line, but uh, because between the four of us, you want to keep surprising each other as well. But there's got to be a, some balance to that. Um, but I think, I think we, we, we managed to do that pretty well. Fortunately, we rehearse a lot, and that's, that's part of the point of rehearsing, is to be able to say to each other, okay, if I, if I try this in concert, that's not going to be a problem for you. So that's, that's our philosophy as well, not to be too predictable. It's nice of you to also refer, hear, to hear you reference as a you know, musician who's at the very top of the mountain, that it's important for you to feel a relationship with an audience. Because we spend, we on our side of the fence spend so much time talking about our mi mission as being one of connecting artists and audiences in uncommon and unique experiences. Yeah. And, but you sometimes wonder if the artists really want to be connected. Well, it's, 
it's so important and I think these days there are so many musicians playing out there uh, we're always looking for a way to I mean, you can't guarantee that you can do it every night but you you're looking for a way to I suppose shake the audience up a bit emotionally and and create a program where there's as wide an emotional range as possible and we get to the point where we we almost expect that here um, so so we come out on stage more sensitized to what's going on in the audience yeah it's a wonderful audience. It's a wonderful listening audience. You can hear the listening. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. It's such a strange thing to say, but you can hear the silence. And I don't know if it's energized. I don't know if audiences realize to what an extent the quality of their listening affects the performance on stage. That that if if you if you hear a certain quality in the audience, it affects your timing, and then you're you're a little bit anticipating, well, if that was how they listened there, then maybe I can try something a little bit different here. And so it's a really, maybe, maybe they don't fully realize that, but that's so much different to, you know, going to a movie where you, as an yeah. audience member, you don't have any effect totally at all. Totally passive, yeah. totally passive. Yeah, I've always thought of a concert ultimately as an energy exchange. Yeah. And you can hear the energy and you can hear it in the silence and a completely disengaged audience sounds 100% different from an audience yes. that's really on the edge of its seat. And, and you can hear it in the silence and also in little surprise. There were, in the Mozart yesterday, there were a couple of kind of surprise little chuckles, uh -huh. you know, every now and again. And, 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 and I think an audience that uh, doesn't feel in... The performers can create an atmosphere on the stage where the audience doesn't feel inhibited about mm -hmm. expressing that. Mm -hmm.